back. We're going to talk about a subject that, frankly, was news to me, but apparently in a very important court ruling, a new challenge to the administrative state, what some have been calling the deep state of late, has emerged from the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals. A man who has been tracking this and talking with the people who brought the case is one of our regulars, I'm very proud to say, good friend. Indeed, we are borrowing his studio in the Dallas area, Kevin Freeman. Uh, the Economic War Room with Kevin Freeman is, of course, his television program at Blaze TV and on other platforms. He's a best-selling author of Secret Weapon and Game Plan. And among other things, uh, the driving force behind a very exciting new initiative, and we're going to talk a bit about it in a moment, the National Security Investment Consultants Institute. Uh, men of many parts and always a great resource. And uh, I particularly want to commend to you the battle plans that Kevin produces with his team for the war room, um, the economic war room that he hosts. Kevin Freeman, it's good to have you with us, sir. Welcome back to Securing America. Thank, Thank you for Frank. welcoming us to Economic War Room. Oh, we're glad to have you. Thank you. So, Kevin, uh, there's this case called Jarkezi versus SEC, the Securities and Exchange Commission. Honestly, I never heard anything about it until you brought it to my attention. Uh, tell us, well, what the nature of the case is and uh, the importance, as you see it, of the ruling that's been handed down by this uh, Circuit Court of Appeals. Sure. Uh, well, the case is a simple one. The SEC came in and, and they determined that they didn't like what an investment advisor was doing. He had a radio program that was nationally syndicated. And uh, they said he violated some of their administrative uh, rulings and decisions. And so as a result, they investigated him. Uh, they said he violated the legislative aspect of it. And then they had an administrative court and they ruled that he was guilty. And uh, some lawyers picked up the case, ran with it all the way to the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals, and they found, wait, lo and behold, the administrative state, the SEC, was acting as the executive, the, the uh, legislative, and the judicial branches all in one, and that's contrary to what the Constitution intended, and the Fifth Circuit agreed with them. It's a massive ruling with deep implications. And I, I think it's fair to say, Kevin, that... Uh, it's not entirely clear they're actually allowed to be any one of those things, let alone all three of them. Um, they're an agency of the government, the executive branch, to be sure. But um, to be exercising, you know, powers greatly beyond their, you know, uh, charter is, uh, is problematic, especially, as you say, in the legislative and judicial arenas. Uh, so what are the implications of this, uh, both, of course, for the SEC, uh, I guess Jarkezi uh, is, uh, is a happy camper, um, but is this going to be appealed, do you anticipate? And uh, that would mean the Supreme Court. Um, and if it's upheld in the Supreme Court, uh, what would you say the likely repercussions would be for the, not just the, again, SEC, but uh, the government writ large? Well, if we went back in history, and I just celebrated with my father his 87th birthday. He was born in 1935. If you go back to prior to 1935, I can tell you how the Supreme Court would rule. They would rule that Congress can't just del create an agency and then delegate to that agency all sorts of powers to determine how they were going to, to um, legislate, rule. Uh, it was called the non-delegation doctrine, so that you just couldn't give that power away. Uh, but Franklin Delano Roosevelt uh, created all these agencies in the New Deal and the Supreme Court was shooting them down. So he threatened to pack the court, much as we're seeing today. And the net results is the court backed off and all of a sudden they just ignored that non-delegation. Well, this F Fifth Circuit ruling brings that back and, and it brings back to the idea that uh, Congress can create agencies and they can tell the agency specifically what they're to do, but they can't vest that agency in the executive branch with legislative powers to create their own rulings for some broad concept because that takes it too far from the people. And I think that Fifth Circuit decision will be upheld by the Supreme Court, maybe 6-3, maybe 5-4. But this particular court is one that seems particularly open 
to the arguments that were being made in Jarkazi. And so this has huge implications because it means that all of this deep state legislative state that's been created in the executive branch may have to pare back and pull back and be more responsive to the people. That means that we ought to be able to elect representatives who will change the laws that will change those rulings. Right now, the EPA or, or the SEC or the Department of Labor or whatever, they set their own law. And, and we have no real recourse against it. This ruling yeah. could open the door for us to take back our country, at least back to the people and the elected re representatives we have. A, a, word, a word you didn't use, but it's implicit in what you did say, Kevin, but I think it's absolutely of paramount importance, is accountability. Those, those representative relationships are meant to mean that they're those uh, elected to represent us are held accountable. That's you know, right. I just want to mention uh, in passing quickly, Kevin, that uh, I know you haven't seen it, but I had a chance to see over the weekend at the Western Conservative Summit, the premiere of a really powerful new film called Innovation Race. It's been produced by our friend Jenny Beth Martin at uh, Tea Party's Patriots. It is about the Patent and Trademark Office and the kind of power that it used to exercise and, and the kind of power that it gave inventors in our country, innovators in our country. But it has been taken apart, that uh, well constitutionally mandated a patent and trademark system, by the way. And now it's a shadow of its former self, a shell, if you will. And as this documentary makes very clear, the Chinese have figured out that as a result of taking down our patent and trademark system, um, an opening has been created for them to emulate the original and become much more of a center for uh, innovation and to eat our lunch, in other words, in that space. It's a fascinating topic to which I hope we can return with you at some point soon, Kevin, after you've had a chance to uh, review the film. It's one of those things that I think we've got to get um, sorted on rather quickly, get our trademark and patent office back on its footing and uh, encouraging innovation instead of impeding it. We're gonna talk more with Kevin Freeman on the other side of a short break about, among other things, the digital Texan, subject of his newest economic war room program. Right after this.